How's it going, you guys? So for this video, we're going to go over the problem rotate image. So the description says you are given an n by n 2D matrix representing an image. Rotate the image by 90 degrees clockwise. Note, you have to rotate the image in place, which means you have to modify the input 2D matrix directly. Do not allocate another 2D matrix and do the rotation. So the problem is pretty easy to understand. However, it's not so easy to actually implement. So the way we're going to solve this problem is it takes two steps. The first step is we need to transpose our matrix. And then the second step, we need to reverse all of the columns in each row. So I'll show you guys what this looks like with an example. So we're going to start off with an n by n matrix of size 4. And the numbers are going to go from 1 to 16 inclusive. And so we need to complete a 90 degree rotation clockwise. So this would be our goal state after the appropriate rotation. So as you can see, if we were to look at this bottom row, this bottom row becomes our first column. And then this row becomes our second column. This row becomes our third column. And then finally, the top row becomes our last column. So like I stated before, the first thing we need to do is to transpose our original matrix. So what a transpose of a matrix does is it takes the main diagonal of your matrix, which is always from top left to bottom right, and it reflects it around this diagonal. So in other words, we're going to turn our rows into our new columns. Okay, so let's turn our original matrix into a transpose matrix. So we're going to need two different pointers to accomplish this. We're going to need an I pointer, and we can initialize this to 0, and then a J pointer, which will always start at whatever I is. So I is currently 0, so that means J will also start at 0. So our J pointer is going to be a nested loop, that will iterate up to n minus 1. So we our current n size is 4, so we'll iterate up to 3. And on each iteration of this nested for loop, we are going to swap the positions of ij with ji. So I'll show you what this looks like. Let's say we called our original matrix m. It would look like this. So what this will do is as we are iterating over all of our columns, we will simultaneously be looping over all of our rows. And we're going to swap the diagonals. So we're going to swap this 2 and this 5 with each other. We're going to swap the 3 and the 9, the 13 with the 4, right? And then we're going to do it all over again now on this submatrix, starting with this first uh, row and first column in this submatrix. So we're going to swap 10 and 7 with each other, 14 and 8, and then we repeat again. So now we do this smaller submatrix, and then we swap 15 and 12, and then that will be it. Once we complete swapping all of the diagonals in our matrix, that means we will successfully transpose the matrix. Okay, so let's start the iteration process. J is starting at 0, right? And J will always iterate up to N. So currently, both I and J are at 0, so we're currently looking at 0, 0. Now, if we swap 0, 0 with 0, 0, it's still going to be the same number. So our element in the first place would be just be 1. And then we're going to increase our j pointer. And now we're going to swap 0, 1 with 1, 0. So 0, 1 would be this position. 1, 0 would be this position. So now we have a 5 in this place and a 2 in this place. And then we iterate up again. J is now 2. And then we repeat the same process. So 0, 2, that would be this position. 
with 2, 0, this position, we need to swap those. Once again, we're going to increase j, which is now 3. So 0, 3, that would be this number 4, and then 3, 0, 13. So as you can see, in the first iteration, our first row in our original matrix is now our first column. Now all we need to do is repeat this process on these sub matrices. So now all we need to do is increase our I pointer and reset our J pointer. So right now we're currently looking at 1, 1, which is this number 6. And swapping 1, 1 with 1, 1 is still the same number. We increase J, and that means we're currently looking at 1, 2, and 2, 1. So we need to swap 10 with 7. And then we increase our J pointer again. So we need to swap 1, 3 with 3, 1. Since J is at N minus 1, that means we need to reset. So we need to increase our I pointer and then reset J. So that means we're currently looking at 2, 2. We're going to increase J. So that means we're looking at 2, 3 and 3, 2. So we're going to swap 15 with 12. We go back, we increase I, reset J. So I now becomes 3, J starts at 3. And so the final number we're looking at is 16. And obviously there's nothing to swap. So now we just have 16. And so that is it for transposing our matrix. And now, as you can see, all of the rows in our original matrix are now our columns in our transpose matrix. And so now for the second step, we need to reverse all of the columns for each of our rows. So if you take a look at the first row in our transpose matrix and the first row in our final goal state, you can see that 13951 is the reverse of 15913. So to complete this next step, we just need to reverse all of the columns. So in order to reverse this matrix, we're going to need three different variables. The first one, we're going to have another I pointer, and this will point at zero. And so the I pointer is going to represent the current row that we're looking at. And then we're going to need two other pointers. So we can call this J and K. And what J and K will be responsible for is flipping the numbers for each of the columns. And so J will always start at 0, and K will always start at whatever N minus 1 is. So N, in our case, is 4. So N minus 1, that would mean K starts at 3. So we have I currently looking at this first row. J will be looking at the first column, and then K is looking at the last column. And so for each iteration in our nested for loop, we're going to be swapping this J and K pointer with each other. So 1 and 13 are going to swap. Then we're going to move our pointers inwards, right? So J and K will move inwards and then we'll swap again. And we will continue to do this until j is not less than k. So the formula for reversing these columns, we are going to do, so we're going to be swapping m at the position ij with m at the position i of k. Because remember, i is always looking at the row, and then j and k are looking at the columns. So let's start off the iteration process. We have our j at 0, our k at 3. So that means we're going to need to swap 1 and 13. 13 at the start, and then at the end we're going to have 1. And then we're going to move those pointers inwards. So now we're going to be looking at 5 and 9. So now we have 9 and 5. Once we have successfully reversed the row, we need to increase our I pointer and then reset J and K. So our I pointer is now at 1, and now we're going to be looking at this first row. So we're going to swap this 2 and 14. So 14, 
2. We're going to increase our J pointer and decrease our K pointer. And so that means we're looking at the 6 and the 10. So we need to swap both of those. So now we have 10 and 6. And then we need to increase our I pointer and then reset J and K. And that means we're currently looking at the 3 and the 15. So we have 15 and 3. And we need to decrease our K pointer and increase our J pointers. And that means we're looking at the 7 and 11 now. So this position and this position. So we have 11 and 7. And then the very last row, we need to increase our I pointer and then reset once again. So that means we're looking at the 4 and the 16. We swap those. We have 16 and 4. And then once again, we decrease K, increase J. That means we look at 8 and 12, and we swap those. So that would be 12 and 8. And as you can see, after doing that second step, we have now arrived at our goal state. So the key to solving this problem is we need both of these formulas. The first part, which is to transpose the matrix, and the second part, which is to reverse the matrix. Okay, the first thing we need to do, let's just check if our matrix is null or empty, because if it is, we don't want to perform any operations on it. And we can just return. So the first thing we want to do is we want to perform the transpose of our matrix. So let's just create another function. And this is all going to be in place, right? So we're going to be operating on only our input. So let's say transpose matrix, and we're going to pass in our matrix. And then let's also pass in the length, n, of our matrix. And then we're going to do for step two is reverse. So we'll say reverse matrix. And we're going to pass in the same parameters. So let's extract n. So we can say n will be whatever matrix.length is. Because it's an n by n matrix, the rows and columns will be the same. And so all we need to do is call transpose matrix on our matrix. And then we call reverse matrix. So let's implement transpose matrix first. So we're going to iterate. We had two pointers, i and j. So we're going to have i. Remember, it always starts at 0. And it's going to iterate up to n. And then our j pointer always starts at our i pointer, right? so that we can flip the diagonals. So j is going to be equal to i, and j is going to iterate up to n as well. And so now all we need to do is perform a swap of i and j and j and i. So we're going to create another helper function, but let's write this out first. So we're going to say swap the positions. We're going to pass in our matrix, and we're going to pass in i and j with j and i. So what this is going to do, this is going to do what we talked about. We're going to say i and j, and we're going to swap with j and i, right? So let's, let's implement this swap helper function. So we can say swap. We're going to pass in our matrix and then all of our positions. So we can say in i, j, k, and l. And so this is just a normal swap function. So we're going to need a temp variable. So we can say int temp equals matrix at position i and j. And now, since we've extracted i and j into a temp variable, we need to overwrite that position now with k and l. So we can say matrix at position i, j is equal to matrix at position of k and l. And now we just need to set k and l to our temp variable. So k l is now equal to temp. So this function will successfully swap two positions in our matrix. And so that's it for the transpose matrix. Now to reverse the matrix. 
So for this one, we need three different variables, i, j, and k. So we're going to iterate starting at 0, and we're going to go up to n. Because remember, i is looking at the rows of our matrix. And then we're going to have these two inner variables, j and k. And so j will always start at 0, the leftmost column. And then we're going to have a k pointer, which always starts at the very last column. So k is going to be equal to n minus 1. And we're going to continue to move these pointers inward until j is not less than k. So we do this while j is less than k. And for each iteration, we're going to increase j and decrease k. And so now all we need to do is call our swap function. So we can say swap. We pass in our matrix. And we're going to pass in our row with our column, so ij. And then pass in our row again with our second column. And so now this will swap those column numbers at each iteration, essentially reversing all of the columns for every row. So now let's just see if this code runs properly. So let's submit this. And there we go. So our time complexity, it's going to be big O of n squared because in both our transpose matrix and reverse matrix, we need to iterate over all of the elements in our matrix. So it's n squared plus n squared, which bounds to n squared. And then our space complexity is constant. Our requirement was to do this in constant space using only the input that we're given. So that's why it's constant space. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.